Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. Today's episode is the easy way or the narrow way. Take a listen and I pray that it will encourage you to step out of your comfort zone, stop living in learned helplessness, and quit taking the path of least resistance. My friends, we're on his path, going his way. And I pray that this very uh, strong episode uh, will encourage you. Love you all. Hey, everybody. I recently heard someone share on three things that um, work against success. Now, remember that here on Tent Talk, we consider success uh, to be sharing in the most successful life ever, which is God's very own life, right? We are those who share in the life of Jesus Christ. His life, his nature, is our nature, is our life. The most successful life that's ever lived. I mean, on the day when Jesus looked like the greatest failure, hanging on a cross outside of town, naked, bludgeoned, whipped, mocked, ridiculed, spit upon, harassed, was actually his most successful day. (laughs) I'm just wondering if there are a few other sons out there who are yet delivered to the point that they are willing to look like an absolute and total failure while knowing deep within their spirit they are successful. Because when we are carrying out the Father's will with glad hearts, My friends, this is success. We already share in the most successful life ever. I mean, it sounds like an odd statement, but we have to know this. The perfect life. 1 John 5.20 says that this man is the one true God and life eternal. We share in his life. His desire has always been that his life would be freely chosen. His life would be put within our spirit and we would come alive to him. And then we would yield ourselves freely to him and that we would learn his way of life. That we would freely choose it. You see, discipleship is very disruptive, my friends, and it is a deliberately chosen way of life. You're no one's victim. No one's going to do anything to you. If you don't choose to go, okay. But my friends, why be born again and not go his way? So this episode is titled, The Easy Way or The Narrow Way? Of course, I'm provoking you to go the narrow way. (laughs) For the narrow way leads us into wide, open places with him. Let him put his limits on you, my friend. Let him. Let him put you in that narrow way. Allow him. Trust him. And when you come through the narrow way, Oh, my. He takes you into big, wide open places with him. I've oftentimes shared about how Jesus allowed the Father to put limits upon him. Jesus only did what the Father was doing, and he only said what the Father was saying. But he did save the entire world. Now, what fights us living this is that we often choose the easy way. So when I was recently listening to uh, a person share, uh, because they weren't speaking about spiritual things, but I, I thought this is really so very true. It's certainly been true in my life, and 
I would venture to say it's true in many people's lives because this person shared that uh, the three things that fight success, now remember I've just defined (laughs) success for you, Uh, but is that the number one is that people just remain in their comfort zone. That 80% of people find reasons not to change. I thought this was pretty strong. 80% of people find reasons not to shift, not to change, not to participate, if you will, in metanoia. That when God gives us the opportunity, he grants unto us the gift of a striking conviction that we need to make a course correction. We've gotten off trajectory. We are not going his way. And he gifts us with this striking conviction that requires a shift in direction which then requires corresponding actions to line up with that new direction or that new life, right? We are free people. As a matter of fact, I'm going to remind you again today, you are the only free people on the face of the earth. It matters. It matters what direction we walk in, what truth uh, we take hold of, the truth, the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus. It matters then the decisions that we begin to make moment by moment inwardly. You know, the majority of them are so private. That's why nobody will really know whether you took them or not until the actions begin to reveal the decisions that we have truly made. Oh, my friends, the will is so important. I spoke about it during the month of September on Ring the Bell. Might be good to revisit those right there towards the end of September. My friends, you are free. Don't remain just in your comfort zone. Let him be your comfort as you step out of your comfort zone. The second one was learned helplessness. You see, my friends, we might have been victims early in life, and I guarantee you I know a lot about this. I wrote about it in the book, and this unbelievable powerlessness that comes over us because of a seducing spirit, an abusive, murderous spirit that says, you don't matter. I can do to you whatever I want. You see, that's not just an action. That's a power known as sin that then is literally in such a guttural, visceral way, is mauling you. But then once you grow up and you're no longer a child, we have to allow God, by his power within us, to literally, literally allow him to break this learned helplessness off of us where we say things like, I can't do it. My friends, that's only half the story. Not I, but Christ. Of course I can't do anything. (laughs) Can you say that and be glad about it? I surely can. Oh, the evidence of his brokenness and of his beautiful, magnificent ways. Oh, I can't do it, and I never was supposed to. It's not my job. But Christ, now here comes my work, which is to trust him. John 6, 26 through 29. Oh, my work is to trust the one. Oh, to trust him. And the third is that people seek the path of least resistance, always looking for the easy way. But my invitation to you today, my friends, as we continue on, in a very timely way. We are still in real-time engagement with the Father. Oh, it's very important. Those 30 days in September were to get us ready to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm inviting you, abandon, forsake the easy way and enter in to the narrow way. I'm doing this today in a very fresh way at whole new levels. 
and I thought I would just share it with you. Oh my, my friends, how it matters how we respond to him. And you are going to know your depths of need and dependency so intensely, so intensely. Mm. Mm. As you realize, oh, how I need you. How I need you, Father. And as I mature, I begin to say, oh, how I want you. I see you, I hear you, I choose you, and I choose you, and therefore I choose your way. Bring me in the narrow way. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, for your great love for me, for every person listening. We choose you with our heads lifted up. You're the glory and the lifter of our head, Father. We choose you with our eyes wide open. And we say, yes, we go with you. And we know, Father, that you then begin to ready us. Your love inside of us will energize and activate our faith in you. Galatians 5, 6. Enfolded in your love which is so beyond a feeling, it is a knowing. Let this come to your people, every person listening right now. And according to Ephesians 4.15, enfold us in love, wrapped up in it, saturated in it. Grow us up for this hour of history. Come on, my friends. Abandon the easy way. And with glad hearts, let's enter into the narrow way with him. I love you all. We will talk soon. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.